With regard to uh, tankas, obviously um, you don't put things inside them. Uh, so how do you prepare them uh, for consecration? Ideally, um, if you can do it in the in the fullest possible way, uh, on the back of the tanka, uh, you would draw a stupa, and uh, within the stupa, uh, place the uh, mantras of renewal and purification of the seven Buddhas, as well as the uh, Sanskrit vowels and consonants and the essence of interdependence. In the case of uh, minor figures on the tanka, or in the case of if you are uh, doing it in a simpler manner, then you can uh, simply uh, put the three syllables, uh, om, a, uh, and hum, in the three places of the deity or deities. Now, for most of these syllables, such as the uh, syllables or mantras uh, of the sense organs and the various uh, other dharanis and mantras that need to be placed uh, in uh, images, there exist uh, woodblock uh, prints that are made in the great monasteries, such as Karmagun, Karma Monastery. And they have uh, woodblock prints of the elaborate, middling, and uh, uh, concise versions of these for use in uh, images of different sizes and uh, so forth. Um, and you, these, uh, Chamaramshi says you should really use these uh, for the syllables because if you try to write them uh, yourself, there will probably, the, there will be spelling errors in the Sanskrit. And in any case, most people uh, aren't able to even attempt to, to write these. And um, he recounts an experience he had, something that he saw um, that uh, gave him a very uh, strong insight into the need to use these, these prints rather than uh, or write it yourself. When his root guru, the victor Chuchi Wangchuk, um, passed from this realm to other realms, it was decided by his disciples to uh, create an image of him that was um, uh, covered with gold and that would be life-size. And uh, among the, uh, his monks, was one called Nangke Bumbo, who was given the uh, nickname, it seems, or maybe it was his name, Kunchen, or All-Knowing. And he was, Rimshe said, one of the, the most knowledgeable of them. And uh, he uh, wrote out all of the mantras needed, including the um, uh, yantra of, the, of uh, uh, Zambala and so forth. And he spent um, a couple of months, a few months doing this. And um, when they were about to place the mantras uh, in the image of Chuchi Wongchuk, um, among the monks there arose a dispute as to whether um, what this uh, monk Kunjin had written was uh, correct or not. There was a former attendant of uh, Chuchi Wongchuk who had also been trained by Chuchi Wongchuk himself while he was alive in, uh, ha in the writing of these mantras and dharanis, who at that time was living in the Karmapa's great encampment. Chuchi Wongchuk did not pass away in the great encampment. So they invited him and um, submitted to his uh, guidance and instruction. And it turned out that most of what Kunjin had written was wrong and uh, couldn't be used and would have, would, should not have been placed uh, in the image. Well, when they found that out, of course, all the other monks were furious uh, at poor Kunjin and said, this, this fellow is ignorant 
but has a great desire to be uh, perceived as learned. He nearly destroyed this whole monastic community by writing the mantras wrong. And so they were quite uh, angry at him. So as a result of this, the entire group of Chichu Wangchuk's monks and disciples um, received very precise uh, training in how to write these mantras. And that was uh, when Chamirokshi himself, who was there at the time, uh, received this instruction and the basis for what he has written uh, in this uh, essay. Now, at that time, in addition to the principal image, which was life-size, uh, each uh, monk of uh, Chichi Wangchuk's entourage was given a, uh, you call this a span or something? A span-sized image of uh, Shama Chichi Wangchuk. Uh, and um, each one, uh, they, they were, they, each one really made their own. I mean, they, they made a mold and they made the mold. And Chamer Rinpoche, of course, took his back to eastern Tibet to come with him when he returned there and kept it um, for the rest of his life as a support for his faith. And he saw um, the, uh, um, something miraculous happen to that image, two things. The first thing was that on one of the cheekbones, there began to emerge what, what, if it was a human being, you would call like a boil or a, or a protuberance. But it actually was a miraculous uh, shariram, a pill, that the image uh, was producing on its uh, cheekbone. The second miracle of that image was that at some point, a little later on, the neck cracked. And it turned out, Chandra Ramsha wrote, that when the neck on the statue of his guru cracked was the time when the uh, college or monastic community of his guru was sacked and um, destroyed by the Mongolian armies. And he said, now, at the time of writing this, I have placed it as the Jnana or wisdom being in the heart of a golden image of Guru Rinpoche that I have created. Now, uh, then he says, at the um, conclusion of uh, whatever uh, Dharanis uh, you write, um, you, you can write uh, whatever verses of auspiciousness and dedication and aspiration uh, you, you wish to. But don't sign them with your name. And he says, because there is an image of um, the Buddha uh, Dipangara uh, at uh, Kampo Nenang Monastery. And it was created by uh, his guru, Chuchu Wongchuk. And therefore, at the end of that, uh, at the end of the uh, Dharanis, uh, when Chuchu Wongchuk composed the verses of auspiciousness and aspiration, it does say, written by uh, Chuchu Wongchuk. But Chuchu Wongchuk, the sixth Shamarabhashe, was a bodhisattva, an Arya. And if we write, if we ordinary beings write aspirations, we cannot uh, bear or withstand the effect, uh, uh, which he'll explain in a minute, of our names uh, being put either inside statues or even in, in these books. So he says, that's one thing, but we're not like him. We should not let our names be included. So therefore, even though it's, it's said customarily to write the name of the patrons and write the name of the person who writes the verses at the end of the, um, the stanzas of auspiciousness and dedication. He said, don't do it. it, it, it it's, it's not fitting. This is true not only for uh, images and stupas, but also for uh, Dharma texts. When you, um, and this is, you still see this, um, when a, a text is printed, 
then sometimes some uh, a, what's called a pajang munsik or, or printing dedication will be written. Sometimes it's written by a great master, but sometimes it's written by an you know ordinary uh, uh, lama or ordinary person. And um, he, he Chamaramche says says there is a custom of writing this, but it's wrong. You shouldn't do this. You should not assign anything that's going to be treasured as scripture um, with your own uh, with your own name. And Ramshay said this includes like when we're asked to sign copies of Dharma books. He says actually that's not really okay. Why is this a problem? Among magical operations, there's one called uh, oppression which is where, or control, which is where if someone is villainous, then you can stop their villainy and control them by putting their name, or and maybe a little bit more than that, but let's say their name, under a stupa, or under a statue, or under a text, and so on. And because the the merit, to say the least, of the stupa, the statue, and the text is far greater than that of the person who is being villainous, um, they're kind of imprisoned by it, and they can't do whatever mischief they were doing before. Well, if you sign Dharma books, or you your name is written in the Dharma book, or at the end of the, the mantras that and prayers that go into a statue, then you're putting yourself in the position of automatic oppression or a, a imprisonment. So um, it's and Chamarumche says the saying that um, the, the, uh, something Rumche said he doesn't know exactly what he's saying about a, some edition of the Kundra, so we're going to leave that out. But he says I know that whatever it's referring to, he said what went wrong with that is because of this. Chamarumche says I know. So, instead of that, when you um, commission uh, and the consecrate, the, when the commissioned image, stupa, or texts are consecrated and shown for the first time, at that time, you can dedicate the virtue and make aspirations on behalf of the patrons or donors or sponsors and whoever, whatever lamas are involved in it, but don't write their names in or on the uh, support, whether it's a support of body, a statue, support of speech, a text, a dharma book, or support of mind, stupa. Chamaramche continues, if we treat the names of ordinary people, or as we saw before, uh, their, their remains, ashes and bones and so on. The way we treat the names and relics of those who have achieved the bodhisattva levels, then um, it will uh, harm us. We can't support the, the, the pressure of that. And if in the case of someone who's passed away, it will actually harm them uh, rather than help them if their name is included. The earliest famous uh, incidents uh, of this uh, occurred during the Buddha's uh, lifetime. During the Buddha's lifetime, a prominent Tirtika uh, spiritual teacher called Usung Zoke, which I won't translate because then you'll mix it up with one of the Buddha's disciples and then it'll, yeah, I don't want that, so we'll just say Usung Zoke here. He died, and uh, a uh, stupa containing his remains was erected by his disciples at a crossroads, a major crossroads, in the uh, town of Shravasti. And then many years went by. Now, among the Buddha's Shravaka disciples, one, Mudgalyayana, had the foremost or greatest miraculous abilities. And as a result, with those miraculous abilities, every day he would pass through all of the six realms and to um, view them. 
Uh, one day when he visited a hell realm, he encountered the Usung Zogje, the, the dead Jirtika teacher, who um, called to uh, Madhagyayana and asked him to bring a message back uh, to earth for him. He said to him, um, it doesn't matter when ordinary people circumambulate the stupa that has been uh, set up in the middle of the village of Shravasti. But when uh, those who are in the entourage of the Buddha, who adhere to a vehicle higher than mine, so in other words, any Buddhist, circumambulate it, even unintentionally, um, when they're walking through the town, then they, 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 as we saw earlier, circumambulate it unintentionally. They have to to get around town. And that uh, harms me terribly. It, it, uh, it greatly uh, exacerbates my suffering. So therefore, Arya, I ask that you uh, return to earth and tell my followers to dismantle that stupa and to reassemble it and set it up in an isolated place where no Buddhists uh, will uh, circumambulate it. Well, Mudgalayana did as he asked. He returned to earth and um, he entered a vast gathering of the Jirtaka disciples of Usung Dzogje and um, he gave them the message. Well, of course, they were furious and um, they beat Murgalayana until um, he was, uh, they beat him almost to death and he was unable uh, to rise. His limbs were broken and everything. The other Shravakas had to uh, create, had to wrap him up and create a, a stretcher and carry him back to where the Sangha was living. And um, they asked him, you are the greatest, you possess the greatest miraculous powers of any of us. Why did you not display any miracles to prevent them uh, from beating you in this way? And he said, forget about actually engaging in any miraculous display. I didn't even remember that I could. Well, they went, of course, to the Buddha and they asked him uh, why that had happened to Madhagalayana. And he said that uh, countless kalpas uh, before Madhagalayana had uh, beaten those uh, Tirtikas who beat him uh, on that day. And that this was the ripening of his karma. Which, among other things, Chama Rinpoche says, teaches us that even if you have achieved that level of realization and miraculous abilities, there is no avoiding the ripening of your previous uh, karma. These instructions on um, how to uh, fill uh, images, uh, I've written, he says, uh, as uh, a companion to my uh, uh, ceremony of uh, consecration uh, writings. And as dictated by, by me, Ragasya, uh, this was written down by the Bhikshu Tsundru uh, because he has the most diligence. Of course, his name Tsundru means diligence. If there are any errors in this, I confess them to the learned. By the virtue of this, may all future uh, patrons or donors, in other words, those in a position to uh, create images, whenever they create uh, supports of body, speech, and mind, whether big or small, do so without error. May they be successful in this. May they become properly consecrated. And may they bring the area where they reside auspiciousness and virtue. 
May those who sponsor the creation of these flourish, both their family and Dharma lineages, and may they do flourish without, uh, without um, dying out or impairment. So now Q and A. So we will follow the same format um, as um, yesterday's question and answer. One question from the center who is watching this teaching live in the U.S., South America, and Europe, and then one question from the audience. So if the audience have any question, please come up. Uh, we have chairs here for you. The first question is from Aminia KKSG. Again, thanks beyond words to Rinpoche for precious teaching. Long life to, be, to the precious guru, and thanks to all the KDD who made this all possible. Question, are there designs for Zaza houses? Should they be round, square, rectangular, many size, such as eight or six size? Should there be one door entry to the house? Does the door face the correct direction? Should there be windows or a door on each side rather than just one door? Can there be many shelves or tiers to be placed? The many statues or stupa inside the house? Can the walls to the house be glass so that you can see the images? Okay, I'll have to break that up into about 20 parts. Otherwise, they will just answer the last part. You know how it is. The Aminia Ketisin Karinjo Varis. Then, Jungden on the Mombosons, Satsa Kang Seva, the Satsa Kang Seva, the Mombosons, Satsa Kang Padawa, the Della, the Kopa Zoluk, Nixa Yorebe. Yorbasa Yores, Lassa. Shall the Tatana Zanti get in the Dawah Yere, Lassa. Till a true by your right, Yepa Yomaris, Lassa. Till a tongue line, Jade and Commandaja, Lassa. Then, till a kiss at the um, the design is similar to that of the Mandala Shrine uh, in the KTD Shrine Room, and but less elaborate. Basically, there's a supporting platform, and then like the the house or building or walls which emerge from the circumference of the mandala itself, there are the four sides, and then at the top. There is an ornamental roof and similar to that uh, with a finial. Okay. So, uh, yeah. I have um, I have two questions. I want to ask the second one first so that you can answer it second. The first question is, uh, the second question, I'm sorry, is just what is the simplest guide to making satsas? Um, I was once riding in a car with a curator of a major art museum, and she said um, that this, the museum had uh, a rupa, oh, she didn't call it that, which is a filled statue, and it had been sealed and sealed on the bottom, and they were, they were trying to decide whether they were going to take everything out of the inside of it to see what it was. These are art curators, right? So my question of Rinpoche is about um, when you move these objects into a no longer sacred situation, you put them in a museum, you attach a label on them, put them in a plexiglass case, what happens to the everything inside? You know, um, were, Would they have been violating something really terrible um, by taking anything out? So the question, the the I'm just going to ask one of your questions because it's one question per person. Oh, okay. uh, so which one do you want to ask? The second uh, first one I or the first one. second one? I mean the, the one that I asked about uh, art curators taking things out. Okay. So that question I couldn't qu quite understand everything you were saying, but are you asking should they remove it or if they remove it, what are the consequences? Well, so she asked me, I mean, I was doing that at the time, so I had to point it, but she asked me whether I thought it, it should be removed 
and the Lord, and I said, um, I, I think there's a curse in the world. You're ready to leave them there. Uh, well, I'm sorry, I can't. I have a hard time uh, understanding you. Well, then, okay. Uh, so you want to know, should they remove it or not? Yeah, I mean, it's... Okay, it's, that's, that's it's fine. Like, what, what happens if they do remove it? Okay. You mean what happens to them? Or what should be done I with the stuff?
You are here, right? Oh, no. So, so, so concerned on the oh, the yeah. Plaster of Paris. Okay, Plaster of Paris. Next. Did it? Yeah, I'm sorry. You're sorry. Thank you, Rinpoche, for your teachings. Um, it seems that the process of doing stupas is a very complex one. Mm -hmm. um, what practice we could do to promote auspiciousness and, and remove obstacles to do this practice? Chicken, Susin, Shenya Layang, Nondo de Tunjin Zomba, but she sell go with us. Chicken, Shenya La, Tunjin Zomba, but she sell again, Yanlin, Mixel Karego with us. Chitong, Chitin, Sasha, the son of Yelao, Chitin, the son of Sasha, the son of ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっ
can be either the eight stupa tzatza or the hundred stupa tzatza. But what is important is that while making them, that uh, their making or the merit of their making be dedicated to the benefit of uh, the dying person. And so that if he or she has the karma to remain alive, that they overcome their illness and recover. And if they do not have the karma to remain alive, that all of their wrongdoing and obscurations be purified and they be reborn at best in a pure realm, or if not, at least in a precious human body fit for the practice of Dharma. Uh, last year's, you call it long life drutu, ayusadna, 
Um, and uh, he can do this. He is qualified to do this. But I can't say exactly when he will be able to come. And then there's the issue of the creation of the foundation. That needs to be, um, the, the company that's going to do it needs to be arranged, and it needs to be done, and so on. But what I can tell you is it will get done. Jona de Dawa Kashi Girin Lion, Tsata Zogrebe, Niki Tsata Zogana, Yona Tsata Zotogrebe. And then a circumambulation, a path uh, surrounding it. 
And of course, how many tzatzas you put in depends upon the, the size of the, the structure that you build. But if you think about 100 small tzatzas, does not take up a great deal of space, and yet still you've got 100 tzatzas in a in a tzatzah house on your property. But they definitely, all the tzatzas definitely need to have the proper daranis placed within them. And we have um, uh, photocopied or printed a sufficient number of the uh, five great daranis to be placed inside uh, uh, any and all tzatzas. <laughs> Now, I, at best, the, the tzatza uh, house or tzatza shrine would be made out of um, a stone or, or a cement. But if you can't do that, you can easily make a small one out of a wood, which could contain 20 or 30 tzatzas without a problem. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rinpoche, for answering Omina KKSG's questions. That was all most of it. The next question is from um, Ann Arbor, KTC. Um, does your practice improve while practicing with a statue or other ritual items that has been consecrated properly and one that you just you just buy from a store that has not been consecrated? Mm. I guess, you know, the difference. How much of a priority should we place on consecrating our personal shrine items? Molds for the eight. Mm -hmm. um, okay. For the tzatzas. That consoke, consoke, that the chujemadam, 
Chu jama nika ke kopar, tam guru ke tata ke kopar kanyara ke. Um, well, 
first of all, uh, the, to make uh, fire tzatzas, uh, you should start a fire with uh, fragrant wood as fuel. And uh, then the uh, tzatza mold used obviously has to be of metal. And um, it has to have attached to it a, a long uh, pole or handle because you obviously can't hold it in the fire. And then you um, put it uh, into the fire as though scooping the fire up and filling it. And then you uh, empty it out. And then you put it into the fire as though scooping it up and empty it out. And each time is considered one uh, tzatza of uh, fire. In the case of uh, wind tzatzas, and Rimshay said he saw this a lot in Tibet, um, you also use a metal uh, mold. Sometimes they'll have a handle, like a pole, uh, sometimes not. But um, you go to where there's a wind coming from the east, uh, blowing to the west, and you scoop up some of the wind uh, with the mold, and then you pour it out. And then each time you do that, that's considered uh, one uh, tzatza. Now, uh, for those two, you don't need anything to go inside the tzatza. But in the case of water tzatzas, you need seven grains of barley. And then, because you remember, Chamarim she said that um, in a monastic college, you have jewels and other things to put inside the tzatza, but if you don't, you can just use seven grains of barley. So um, when you make water tzatzas, then you, you, you use the, um, the mold like a ladle. You scoop up the water, filling the, the mold. You put in the seven grains, and then you pour it back out, and so on. And each time is one tzatza. And Rumshe said when he was a child, he knew an elderly blind woman who did this a lot. And um, especially he liked it when in the winter she would make them because the tzatzas would freeze and he would get actual ice tzatzas. And he would set them up uh, surrounding the, the perimeter of the lake or pool where she, where she did this. Would the fire one you have a, a ladle? No, it's a mold, but it has to be on a pole. Otherwise, uh, have you ever put held something, a metal, in a fire? Yeah, yeah. So you put the, the, the fragrant wood inside the... And while doing all of this, you need to recite O Mene Pime Hum, mindful of its great benefits. No, the fragrant wood is the fuel for the fire. So you make a fire that's used, made from fragrant wood. Then you, the, 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 the pole that, or handle that holds the mold is something else. That's not the fuel. You don't want that to burn. And so you scoop out some of the fire, fire from the fragrant wood, is that what you mean? Yeah, you're scooping the fire. You're not scooping the wood out. No. You're scooping the, the... But there's no fire in the scoop then. Of course going. there is. Well, there's, it is when it's dipped in. You put it right in the fire, not in the bottom. It's not like, um, have you ever built a fire out of wood? Sure. Yeah. So you know that the wood's down here and the fire goes up, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where you, you scoop up, where the fire is, not where the wood is. And while you're reciting Oman uh, and Oman Shri, then what do you do with your mind? Then the 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 zoshin do mane rangyore sema karego do. Sema ariri ke kaza da tsasa ariri do tsasa sema kana chama rumba ke tsasa ariri long long chama tsasa long 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 da tsasa ke mi da tsasa ke kyo da tsasa ke long long tsasa ke. You need to think each time that you scoop the fire, the wind, or the water that you are instantaneously making another tzatza. That's what you do with your mind. You have to understand this and believe in it. Uh, 
um, because if you don't, then you're not going to, to, to do it. And even if you see someone doing it, you won't know what they're doing. There was an, uh, an Eastern Tibetan nun at Rumtek um, who used to do this a lot. She had a mold and she would scoop wind satsas all the time. And <laughs> the, some of the, the uh, local monks um, didn't, weren't familiar with the custom and they thought she was nuts. And they said, there goes that crazy nun again. <laughs> <She's> just, <laughs> Which ones? Not the water ones, but the, the fire and <laughs> the fire the 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 no, they don't last. You can't keep them. Uh, the only of the four types of tzatzas you can keep is the earth or clay or a plaster of Paris ones. Such as 
básica para ela assim, vem cá, mas a senhora pratica? Não, não pratico. Então, é, vai ficar uma te pessoa teórica sem 